I'm Jo Whipple, travel enthusiast, wine and culinary explorer, and adventure seeker. Join me on this beautiful trek along the California Highway 1 Discovery Route as we journey down California's breathtaking Central Coast. It's 101 miles of fun where 10 destinations make for one fantastic vacation. So sit back and enjoy the ride. artist destination. People from all over the country flock here to enjoy the beauty and nature that we have right here in our own backyard. We're going to go into this real working artist studio right now and learn from some of the artists who are in there. Not only are they teaching, but they're actually creating. Hi, my name is Brad Delk. I'm a member of Los Osos Art Destination. If you've ever wanted to fulfill a dream of becoming an artist, maybe this is a vacation you should consider. We have many styles of art instruction. My personal instruction is in oil and acrylic on canvas, as well as drawing and ceramics. Take a look at our website, losososartdestination.com, and have a look at some other artists that are offering instruction in our group. My name is Rod Baker, and you're here at Central Coast Glass Blowing, which is my studio. We do glass blowing here and glass fusing. I offer a one-on-one -on -one two to three hour glass blowing experience in my studio. We used to go to Oregon for four months in the summer and blow glass for tourists. Fortunately, at some point, this property became available and I moved my whole operation down here to Los Osos, which is where I've always lived. It's definitely something that I put my heart and soul into and I think you would enjoy it. I'm here with Larry Lebrain at Central Coast Glass Blowing and Fusing, and Larry is the master of glass fusing, and he teaches that here. Larry, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a retired art instructor at the community college. I have 32 years. I moved here in 03. I got into fusing then, and I just fell in love with it. I find it very creative, and it's very easy. You don't need much experience to get started. Let me show you how it works. I start with a circle. I have a circle cutter and I cut it in four pieces, like so. And those are my petals. It's a symbol of sheet of glass. The glass is a special glass for fusing. The center of the glass is the black center. The glass center is made from a piece of black rod. I snip it off and put it in the middle. The pollen is crushed glass called a frit. That's put in the middle. Then it's all glued together. This glue is very runny, very watery, very sticky, and it happens to be white rain hairspray. <laughs> it's very good glue. <laughs> So this is all the student does, and I do the rest. I put it in a kill, and I slowly take it up to 1,465 degrees Fahrenheit, and it flattens out like this, or it fuses, all fused together flat. This is you the place it. to come and fuse, right? Yes, right. <laughs> okay, great. Contact us for information on the next classes. Wonderful. Thank all you. right, thank you. Hi, I'm Rosie Rosenthal, and this is my wife, Barbara, and we are printmakers. We teach everything from beginners to professional artists. And the class can be as short as a couple of hours and you can do a dry point, what we we call our credit card art, because that's the size we use. And then we do a full on wear yourself out weekend class that starts on a Friday evening and goes all day Saturday and all day Sunday. So you come up, enjoy a long weekend. If you're traveling with someone else, they can go wine tasting or golfing or whatever. In the evening, there's lots of wonderful restaurants that you can enjoy. Right here is the plate that I use to make this embossed etching. And that's another option. We just had so much fun and there's so many ways to go and it's a wonderful way to make art. 
So if there's a particular thing you're interested in or any questions, you can always reach us and we're happy to talk. We provide absolutely everything you need. You use our press, our tools, our inks, our paper. You just come and have a good time. Hello, I'm Ken Christensen. I'm a local landscape painter here in Los Osos, and here's a couple samples. Uh, as a painter, I paint mostly on-site, some in the studio, but nothing really matches the pleasure of being outdoors and on-site. At the top here is a local scene in San Luis Obispo, and down below, some architecture from San Francisco, which is always a delight to do. And I've been a full-time professional artist for over 30 years, and I've done a wide variety of things, everything from wallpaper in Paris, to portrait parties, uh, murals for restaurants here in California, but nothing matches the pleasure of painting outdoors and on site. And we usually do a four day workshop where each day we'll go and paint a different scene. I know artists flock from all over to come here and paint because we do have a nice variety of subject matter. There is the coast, the alternative the vineyards and ranches and other nice scenes. Uh, be happy to lead our groups painting here and you simply contact Destination Art to learn more about me and my art. If you've never been to the Central Coast, this is what you're missing. Spooner's Cove has got to be one of the most majestic places you have ever seen in your entire life. Highway 1 Discovery Route is full of tide pools, but Spooner's Cove especially. You have to check it out. I'm here with Jen Rose of No Worries Beach Trail Rides right here in Montaña de Oro State Park. This is Phoenix, and who are you with, Jen? This is Tara. She is a fell pony, and there are only 300 of these horses in the United States right now. And actually, this is the Queen of England's choice of mount. <laughs> We're with royalty today. All right, Jen, show me how to do this. I need a lot of help. You can just go ahead and stick your left foot up there. Okay. And grab the horn and pull yourself up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you are good to go. Just like a pro. <laughs> Ready? I'm going to follow you. All right, hands <laughs> okay. down and we'll okay. go. Hands down. Here we go, Phoenix. Here we go, Good Phoenix. Oh, this way, Phoenix. Okay, okay Phoenix. Ooh, that way. Wow. This Highway 1 Discovery Route is just really special. I'm here in Los Osos Baywood Park in the back bay. Virtually undiscovered sanctuary. Tranquility everywhere. I just grabbed this kayak from Dennis down at Horizons in Morro Bay right down the road. I gotta go see more. I'll see you later. at Sea Pines Golf Resort with head golf professional Brian Hamilton. Thank you for having us. Oh, well, welcome. Thank, I love to have you guys out here. <laughs> and this is a very unique course that you have here, right? Most definitely. We're, I think, one of the few golf courses in the state of California that have all three forms of uh, golf. Foot golf, disc golf, and traditional golf. I love it. Okay, well, I'm going to really need some help with the traditional and probably all of them. But can we start with this? You We're just show me how it's done. Perfect. We're going to do a little chip shot okay. here. The simple simple form of this is we're going to form a Y with our arms okay. and we're just going to swing the Y. And I'm going to produce this and release it. I think you can do the same here, yes. forming that Y with your arms sure. and the club. We swing the Y and we release it. Got it. Okay, ready? There we go. <clears throat> all right. Okay. There we go. I'd still keep your day job. <laughs> Well, thank you. Should we move on to maybe some foot golf? Most definitely. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We're back at the fifth hole on the fourth tee, nestled here in the Morro Bay Estuary, and I think we better try something different, right? Yeah, we're gonna try something <laughs> okay. different. Foot golf. Let's see. Show me how we how we do this. Well, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. We have a hole over here, and it's just kick it, kick the ball just like you would golf, and try to follow it along the. The turf and let it roll toward the hole just like oh, that. Oh, 
Well, it's your turn now. Let's uh, give it a shot there. Okay, everybody, clear the way, clear the way. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> that can't be. Yes. That cannot be yes. in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow, incredible. That's see, back to back. That's how it's done. <laughs> yes. Right here right. at Sea Pines Golf Resort. Really, lots of luck going on in this it's place. Like, keep it going. Yeah. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh that was a blast, Joanna. That was so much fun, Brian. Thank you for yep. having me. Hole in one in foot golf. I can't believe it. Two that's of them. Awesome. Two of them. Lightning struck twice. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to come back. Would love to have you again. Okay, well, I will. I'll see you soon. Take care. Okay, bye. Okay, I just want to remind you, a hole-in-one in foot golf. Here, here we are in Rose's Grove. Oh, my gosh, is this beautiful? Wow, the Elfin Forest in Los Osos Baywood Park with Ron Rasmussen. Ron, tell us what you do here. Well, I'm the chairperson of Small Wilderness Area Preservation, and we take care of the Elfin Forest. You do. And without you, this wouldn't be here, would it? That's correct. Our organization began with the goal of saving this elfin forest from development. That's other, right. People wanted to build houses here, oh, but that gosh. would not be good. Rose was one of the people who really did that, didn't she? Yes, she was instrumental in raising the funds from the community and from grants to actually buy this property. She used to invite potential donors down here to this grove, right. and they had have parties and music and have a good time. And at the end of that day, she would ask, how about pitching in to save the elfin forest? That's right, because it doesn't happen without those kinds of donations, right? That's correct. And that's why you are part of stewardship travel. That's correct. Yes, and lots of activity is available for folks that want to come and visit, right? Yes, we have uh, scheduled nature walks about twice a month. Mm -hmm. And if a group wants to have a special trip, they should give us a call and sure. we can talk about it. And otherwise, you can just come and visit, walk along the ADA boardwalk that goes all the way down. Yes, right? the park is open technically from dawn to dusk. Well, that's perfect. So we can catch you from dawn to dusk. But whatever you do, stewardship travel is a really vital part of saving these kinds of preserves. So come down, enjoy it, and just take a look around. We're here at Sextant Winery in Edna Valley with Craig Stoller, proprietor, and Ashley Leslie, wine specialist. This is absolutely amazing. It actually is the oldest vineyard in the valley. Right here was Old Price Canyon Road, and at the end of it, you'd find the old hitching post. This was your one-stop shop, so people would come in by train or by horse, and they were always greeted by a lovely lady named Edna. Okay, who is Edna? You know, your guess is as good as mine. It's actually a mystery within our, our neck of the woods here. She was either the farmer's daughter that came, um, she or she was a nun that came to kind of dismiss the chaos, or she was the madam of the brothel, which is not currently active. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. And it looks like she has blessed this place for sure. Oh, absolutely. That's the one thing that we do know about her, that she blessed our McGregor Vineyard right here. Uh, the oldest vineyard in the valley. The influence of the cool ocean climate produces delicious Chardonnay and, and Pinot Noir. That's what we have on site here. You're not new to this at all, are you? <laughs> yeah, my dad started propagating uh, grape rootstock about 45 years ago, and one of my first jobs was to get out, learn the wine country, different regions, and then uh, meet the people in the business. And I absolutely fell in love with wine you know, over 20 years ago. Well, it's not hard to do when you're looking at this backdrop, right? And it's not just the wine that we're looking at here and the magnificence of it, but it's actually the beauty of the sheep and the land and all that we have going on here. Thank you guys both so much for being here and thank you. I'm here with Patia Torrance. She's the town site restorator and mayor and just all around amazing, amazing woman. And this is Leonard. Hello, Leonard. Hi. He's here to greet our guests that visit the old Edna town site here in the Edna Valley. Um, 
We love stewardship travel. We like to introduce our animals to all the families and children that arrive on a daily basis. It's been an amazing project. I started here in year 2000. It's now 2015. I've put a lot of years into restorating this town site. You know, many of the buildings have names on them, and they have to do with the children that lived here almost 100 years ago. So yeah. Alma is one of the children. <laughs> I love it. And you just won an award, didn't you? I did. Uh, California Assembly for Restoration and um, Preserving this Town Site. What I love most is the visitors that come from all over the world that are looking for an experience such as this. Um, they kind of like this bird. <laughs> A little bit. And the goats and all the old buildings. There's something about this kind of place that... Um, leads people to a special place in their life. And I can see why, it really, this place is just off the chart. The history, the culture, the beauty. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. And thank you, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for joining us here. Hope to see you all soon. Jonah, il faut que je t'avoue quelque chose. Quand j'étais en France et que je faisais du vin, Je n'étais pas un bon chef de cave. So, un jour, ce qui est arrivé, on m'a mis dans un avion et on m'a déporté en Californie. Euh, bueno, bueno, espera un momentito, es que no habla français, pero si quiere hablar en español, yo puedo hablar en español. ¿Quieres? Sí, no, no, oui. No, ah. no, capito que me dice. Ay, ay, ay. English? Oh, mais oui, en anglais. <laughs> ok, in English it is. We're here at Beliana with winemaker Christian Rugano. And I am telling you, this place is just spectacular. Historical building, tell me. Yes, it is a, an extraordinary place in here. This is an historical building in San Luis Obispo. This is uh, over 100 years old building, and this is one of the first two uh, schools of San Luis Obispo. So when you come to our winery and, and want to taste Beliana and Tangent wines, you not only have beautiful wine from the Central Coast, but also you enjoy part of history of that small village on the Pacific Ocean, just a few miles away. I love that. And, you know, I have to ask you, what was that story that you were telling me in French? Well, I hate to admit it, but when I was in France, I was not a very good winemaker. So eventually, I got thrown into, with a one-way ticket into a plane and deported to California. <laughs> But I have made great progress since. After 28 years, the wines are quite good. <laughs> they are quite good. And we are not in Napa, right? This is very different. Yes, indeed. And, and we think we're very different from Napa Valley because when you come in here, many people have told me the Etna Valley is like the 60s or the 70s in the Napa Valley. So it is a more relaxed and cool feelings. And not only that, when you find a bottle of wine that you like, you can afford it. It's not going to be $100, but more in the $30 range. So it's nice to be able to enjoy wine that are priced nicely. Yes, because you're right. I would like to take a lot of this home with me. It's absolutely <laughs> spectacular. And whether you want to speak in French or Italian or English or Spanish or any language you want, Beliana truly is international and it is superb. So thank you so much for having us. Et bien sûr, bonne dégustation, comme on dit. <laughs> oh, oui, oui. <laughs> here today at Port San Luis at the Hartford Pier in Avila Beach. Okay, I have been to many beaches and many piers, but I can't remember having the chance to drive on one. It feels like you're driving on water. This 1,320 foot long pier was built in 1878 by John Hartford. This port was the largest oil port prior to World War II. And this is one of the last piers in the entire country that people can still drive on. Once you get out here, there is so much to do, from fine dining to outdoor cafe, or catch your own fresh fish right from the pier. Don't like fishing? That's not a problem. Get your fish from one of three markets that are right down here. It's really awesome. It doesn't stop there. There's kayaking and jet ski rentals, fishing charters, and even a lighthouse to explore. No question, Avila Beach is packed with history, beauty, and fun. We're here in Avila Valley with Slow Wine Country's Executive Director, Heather Moran, and with Biddle Ranch Vineyards General Manager, Lori Maravilla. Thanks for having us here. Heather, tell us about Slow Wine Country. 
Sure, we're a coastal wine growing region, halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco. And we're the most coastal wine region in California, just five miles off the coast. We produce a wide variety of wines, including Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and aromatic white wines. And we encompass two AVAs, American Viticultural Areas, the Edna Valley and Arroyo Grande Valley. And we have about 28 member wineries. That's right, and of those 28 member wineries, you guys are the new kids on the block here in this magnificent building. It's an historic building, correct? It is, yes. Historic schoolhouse built in 1907, two-room schoolhouse, who would have thought it works out perfect as a tasting room. But we have one side is our club room and the other side is our tasting room. Original wood floors, some of the original windows. It's a great space for a tasting room. That's right, and really this is the perfect backdrop to your wines. What do you specialize in? Well, I, you know, Chardonnay is our, our state vineyard located in the Edna Valley and as Heather said all the cool climate varietals are really our, our focus. And this region really is so very unique. It's not just the wines, it's the culture too. That's true. You know, because we are a coastal wine region, that does, doesn't just influence the wines, it also influences our culture here. So many of our winemakers, they're avid bikers, cyclists, um, they love to surf, they, li they like to do things that we call the slow life. You know, it's enjoying life, the great local food and wine scene here, and um, we invite you to join us. Yeah, that's good. The slow life is the good life here in Edna Valley and Arroyo Grande Valley. Come and check it out. I'm here with Tara Malzone. She's the executive director of the Central Coast Aquarium here in Avila. We're surrounded by all kinds of fish and inhabitants of our ocean. Tell us what's happening here. Here at the Central Coast Aquarium, um, our visitors will have a very unique experience when they come to our aquarium. We have all the local sea life and habitats uh, represented here in our aquarium and uh, visitors can come in and experience looking at our oceans uh, sea life up close and we actually have amazing touch tanks where you can get your hands wet and really experience uh, marine life. We, we find that um, with having each of the local habitats represented in all of the marine life that you would expect to see here in Avila Beach, our visitors really, they open their eyes. They're so surprised to see the diverse life that lives here right in, right in San Luis Obispo Bay. So if you want to be a part of marine stewardship, this is your place to come, the Central Coast Aquarium. And thank you, Tara, so much You're for so having welcome. us today. Thank you for being here. This is Avila Beach. More than just a beach town, there's outdoor adventure everywhere you look, even for our furry friends. I'm here in Avila Beach at Old Port Beach, one of two different beaches you can actually bring your dog to, play in the surf, have fun in the sun. I mean, what more do you want? Now we're off to explore the Bob Jones Trail. This city to the sea bike trail is named in honor of local environmental pioneer and activist, Bob Jones. On any given day, you'll find runners, walkers, bikers, and skaters of all ages enjoying the benefit of Mr. Jones's efforts along this one-of-a-kind trail that follows the Pacific Coast Railroad right-of-way along the San Luis Obispo Creek to Avila Beach and ends at the Beach Promenade in downtown Avila. And in pet-friendly Avila, dogs are also welcome on this trail. Whether on your own or with your family, you'll have a blast breathing in the fresh Avila air nestled beneath grand oak trees. And if you don't have your bike with you, no problem. You can rent one from Avila Hot Springs at the start of the trail or Wally's Bike Rental in the Landing Building in downtown Avila. This aerial view pretty much says it all. From the lush green valley to the brilliant blue waters, Avila is a must-see destination on the Highway 1 Discovery Route. I'm here in Avila Beach with Katie Manley, and she is on the board of the Avila Beach Tourism Alliance, and we are picking up trash. Doesn't sound very exciting, but actually it's a really special activity that happens here. Tell us about it. Exactly. We started this, one of our stewardship activities is picking up trash. You can get these at uh, the local lodging properties, um, and inside is a pair of gloves, a bag, and then um, a little bit about what you're picking up so we can get some research on that. And then once you do pick up the trash, you, can, you get your tote bag. 
so you actually get a tote bag for doing good. Exactly. It connects the traveler in a more meaningful way to Avila Beach. Right. Um, makes them want to come back little bit of feel good doing good while you're on vacation all right well thank you for showing us this and when you come to Avila be sure to get your tote bag pick up some trash let's keep this place beautiful all right we're out of here thank you thanks from the beach to the gardens we're in for a real treat with farm to table at its finest I'm here with Greg Wangard he's the executive chef here at the gardens in Avila and Greg, this is like a serious organic farm to table. What do you have going on here? Yeah, we like to call it spontaneous garden cuisine uh, just because we grow different things in the garden. We have about an acre and a half garden uh, on site. And then we're not in the garden. We like to shop at the farmer's markets. I think that we're in one of the best areas of the United States for a farmer's market, uh, knowing that it's a different market almost every day uh, of the week between North and South County. Right, and you're building your menu around that. Oh uh, yeah, we are. We not only the produce and fruits and vegetables, but we also deal with local fishermen that gets us a lot of the local catch. Uh, Dungeness crab uh, just came out and a lot of white sea bass right now, which is exciting. Yeah. Uh, halibut and salmon season was really good, but now it's sort of coming to an end. So it's fun. It keeps everything spontaneous. Absolutely. And so you spontaneously came from Wisconsin here. Yeah, I've been in, Cal <laughs> I've been, well, I've been in California for about 10 years. Uh, lived in LA for about four of them and then been to the Central Coast for seven. So I've been at Gardens of Avila since last February. Uh, my buddy Robert was the chef here and we did a lot of work together on the garden. He really wanted to continue that movement uh, between the garden and the restaurant and really just grow more and get more involved. And uh, it's, it's definitely challenging. <laughs> I think it's a lot easier going to a farmer's market and buying it than it is actually buying the seeds, planting the seeds, right. you know, maintaining the all the elements of a garden exactly. between bugs and animals and, um, and organically we could make a lot of gopher stew okay well, yeah. well can you come and show me yeah <laughs> okay come on let's go this is sort of like our our garnish bin that we uh -huh. we sort of use every night to pick stuff off you garnish little leaves with this what was this again oh that's on nasturtium so on stuff like stuff like that, it's a type of herb, uh -huh. and you would basically take this and you could like peel the petals off and then garnish something with it, uh -huh. or add a whole flower to it. This is a type of uh, Mexican tarragon. It was like sort of smells sweet. Fennel is great too because it grows wild here. Oh wow! You know, it grows grows everywhere, and uh -huh. it's sort of like the gift that keeps on giving. We take all the seeds uh -huh. and the flowers and then make fennel pollen and then like dust seafood with it and cook with it. This one here is like a, a rogue lemon verbena we use it a lot in seasoning then like i said the creme brulee it makes great and then i just like it too just like as a thing just to rub your hands for for fragrance yeah that's yeah, cool it's so like, like... It's a nice like fresh smell mm -hmm. yeah. oh my gosh it is Smell, smells like a bowl of, of fruit loops well the idea <laughs> was is to make a juice garden out here uh -huh. and it's like you know you can see here where you have almost direct access to the path so then you would come in, you'd get water or juice right off oh of the trail. Oh my gosh, because that is... And then you would grow a lot of the oh, greens yeah. and kale and, you know, citrus and stuff like that. Because the Bob Jones Trail is right there mm -hmm. and this is the Gardens of Avila. And thank you so yeah, much for you. having us. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's great to have you. Window. That's that fantastic. Great? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, we're here at Kelsey C. Canyon Vineyards. I'm with winemaker Jack Jacobs and wine club manager Travis Vasquez, who is also a family member. Travis, this place is spectacular and so different from anywhere else. Tell me. Tell me Thank about you it. for saying so. My my uncle would, would love to hear that. He started the winery back in '99 and he really did it just to bring the family back together on that one. And, and it's worked. I mean, you know, you, you can come in here any day and you'll see three or four people behind the counter who are going to be related to us. And for us, that's what's really important. It's about family. We want people to be able to bring the kids, bring the dog, sit out here, enjoy the, enjoy the creek side on that one, and just come up and taste and not need to worry about anything. Yes, you know? exactly. Chasing peacocks. Yeah, exactly. My whole... aunt might get a little, little, little angry <laughs> if she happens to see that one, but just keep it on the down low and we'll be good. That's right. <laughs> and with that, I mean, it's just magnificent. The wines that you have, I mean, you are a renowned winemaker, and here you are. Kelsey, tell me, what what is your philosophy? With well, winemaking? I've been very fortunate in my 30 plus years. I had some incredible mentors in the wine business, and their philosophy right up front, what they taught me was wine should be fruit forward. 
And so that's what we try to do. You can't make Cabernet out of Pinot Noir. You can't make Chardonnay out of Sauvignon Blanc. Each wine should be distinctive in and of its own. And so that's what we focus on here. You know, we don't, don't over oak the wine so the fruit comes forward. Yeah. That's the whole point. And you can really taste it and it shines through because you've just taken some big medals home, haven't you? Central Coast Wine Competition. We just yeah. took uh, four gold medals, three best of class. One of our wines was considered one of the top five wines in the entire competition. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And you had some unique wines in there too that won. We did. Also, one of the wines was uh, Golden Delicious, which is apple juice fermented with Chardonnay. And you're not going to find this anyplace else in the world. And that wine took a gold medal. And in what category was that? That was with all the rest of the whites. So <laughs> it wasn't some funky apple class and right. the judges never knew there was apple in it. They oh, wow. judged it with all the rest of the wines. Oh, wow. And our Red Delicious, which is red wine fermented with apple juice, won a silver medal in the same competition. So it's uh, we're making some really inroads in that area and Sea Canyon is known for its apple production. From that standpoint, we also have a hard cider. Oh, that's right. There is a hard cider here and it's delicious. It's amazing. And I'm telling you, you have to come to Kelsey Vineyards. It is just special. Chase the peacocks, feed the dogs, feed the peacocks, chase the dog. I don't know, but you're going to have a really great time. So come down. That's our episode. Next, we're heading up the road to breathtaking San Simeon, quaint and charming Cambria, and our favorite one-horse beach town, the one, the only, Cayugas. See you there.